Welcome back to Life and Style's Artistic Tuesday. And uh, we had a great time with the Nero the Band on Performing Arts right now. We are on Paintbrush and I've got Agria Guata who's doing something that I've not had on the show before. And it's called Alternate Realism. We've had all sorts of realisms here, but I've never heard anyone say Alternate Realism. Welcome to the show, Aguata. Um, thank you. All right. So yeah. what really is Alternate Realism? Because I'd like to understand that first. Alternate realism is like my kind of realism. It's just my style. That's what I call my style. Oh, wait a minute. This is not like, you know, the way we have uh, hyper-realism. Alternate realism is something that Aguata does. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's unique to just you. Yeah. And yeah. what is it? What is it? What is uh, it that Aguata does that is different? Um, uh, in my paintings, I say I don't paint what is there in this reality. It's in another realm. Like... I paint what is in another realm, another alternate reality alongside this one, but not this one. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> okay, I'm stuck <laughs> on what, re what other realm will be, wh uh, you, you focus on in your painting. But maybe if we work with probably a picture like this one, you yes. would tell us more about that? Okay, it's, that's a friend, a portrait of a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when you look at the background, you can tell it's not plain. Yeah. Uh, ordinary what you expect in a normal background so mm -hmm. in my mind that's what I pictured that's the uh, background I pictured her alternate self would be in yeah would have a background like that yes God, I would want a white background or something that's beautiful like flowers but anyway that's just your imagination let me just give us a bit of background now that we know what alternate realism is just a bit of background about yourself as an artist um I've been around the art industry from 2012. That's when I had my first exhibition at the museum. 2012? Yeah, the first conceptual art exhibition in Nairobi. Wow. Uh, so I push boundaries. Like, I ask questions a lot. I'm, I'm inspired by what I see. Mm -hmm. But then I, have, I ask a lot of questions. Uh, and that curiosity is what has led me to doing art. That's what I say. I, I'm not a, I'm, I'm an artist because I ask a lot of questions. So you go beyond what we accept. Into the alternate reality. Into the alternate. Yeah. And if, if this couldn't be this, why not this? And yeah. why this way? Which is very, very interesting. It's an interesting way to look at life and uh, put that on canvas. So 2012 is when you had the very first exhibition. That means you started this way before 2012. So maybe you can take us at that back. Okay, I grew up doing art, let me say that. Like when I was in primary high school, in campus I still did art. But when I was in primary, I, I used to draw that the other kids could notice it and the teachers could notice it. Yeah. So I just grew up liking art, drawing and all that. So as, as I developed, when I was in, in high school, I was good in painting. But in primary, it is the first experience I had in painting. When I was in when, painting in primary? Yes, when I was in class seven. Wow, and how was that for you? Did, it was that the that when you got real, the realization that you'd actually be, uh, you know, like a, an artist later on in life. Actually, I remember saying, "Kwa mkubo utakuwa nini na sema mtu anachora." You were true to yourself. Yeah. And most people are not. They just say things because they sound the, the words or whatever that profession sounds yeah. like. I, like I could do the other subjects like math, so that I can hurry up and go to drawing. Like they were standing in the way of me doing art. So I finished them at, so I can do art. So high school, you also had a chance to yes, do I painting? Had it. I had a chance to do art because mm -hmm. art was among the subjects that I studied. Okay. Yeah. So after high school? After high school, I went to KU. I did art there. Mm. Then um, I got involved into the art industry. What do people do out here? So I started learning from the experts, learning from those people who are in already established artists. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for you to have gotten to this point, be, um, when you went to KU, of course, now you had to study the art. But the business side of it is not something that probably comes naturally to a person. That means probably you had someone hold your hand and teach you the ropes? Um, yes. Like a I mentor? Have, I, I, have, I have had um, an experience with a couple of uh, established artists. Uh, Elkana Ongesa is one of them, an established sculptor. Yeah, I've learned from uh, various other artists like um, Anne Mwiti, who is a painter. 
she's really good at what she does so uh, although it's very different from what I do so I learn from something else so I can interpret it in my own way instead of learning from someone who's doing realism and I'm doing realism I may end up copying because it's, it's human kind of so I learn from a sculptor so I can interpret it in pencil work Wow so that my thought process is provoked by the creative expression of the artist that is very very interesting and actually very very deep so why did you choose this form of art? I mean, you've been exposed to all these other kinds of artists who are doing different kinds of things, but why the passion to just focus on your paintings? Um, I do what I like. I, okay. I, like when, when I feel something is, um, I may keep working on the way and then I see something inspiring somewhere I didn't expect it there. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I just pick it the way it is. Like I can stop there and start sketching or I take a photo so I can sketch it later on. So my style is kind of spontaneous. It depends on what runs on my mind and on what I see. So uh, my expressions will have to come better in painting because I believe uh, our eyes detect color. And when you see color, you know, it can express um, something that a pencil could not have expressed. Mm. Or maybe when you are doing sculpture, I used to do sculpture, but I stopped. Uh, when you do sculpture or other fields that are 3D, you may be limited due to the time. Oh, yeah. okay. But when I'm expressing myself through painting, it's within like six hours I've done something, or maybe two days if I take long, I've uh, finished expressing my idea. So the convenience of the time too really does support me choosing painting. Okay. Yeah. You talked about color and I'm seeing amazing portraits over there. Tell me about that. Um, the portraits are an experimentation on, on color. Like you see, I've not used uh, the ordinary brown and the background, the color someone expects to see. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I had to do that on my face so that when someone, when someone asks, uh, can you do this? I already have it. Or maybe if they don't ask, they already see it. So they can That's your face. I, I really hope you could have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. Of course I did notice. Of course I did notice that that's you. How does it feel to just see yourself there and knowing that it's you who did it? I, I, I don't have that. You know, there's this thing uh, in Kenya that um, some, you tell someone I'm an artist, then they'll tell you, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have that because <laughs> when I look at it, I want to correct it. Oh. I feel like there's something I didn't finish. So it's your face. So what didn't you finish? <laughs> <laughs> I think nice. it's. I think it looks really good. I think it looks really good, and I can see the alternates right there yeah. with the different colors that you don't expect in the background. The green that matches your outfit and your hood and your um, Mervin. That's your signature. I, I like Mervins. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this is a very also very 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 interesting. Um, a painting over here, the one with the hats. Um, Maybe you can tell us more about that. Um, I was thinking cultural, then I was um, questioning myself about how did the African structures look like before introduction of, of you know, the bricks and cement and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, but as I was working on it, I had this idea of, of spirits and a pot. So it's like, uh, it's a doctor's home. So they're mm -hmm. cooking something. They, they're planning to heal someone. So the rest I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> that is what is going on in your head. Yeah. OK, and that other one, very interesting. I don't get it. The, the, the eye, the one with uh, the eye. The, this, uh, uh, it's called a wake up call. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, Africa seems to be sleeping and we have forgotten who we really are. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the society, People are fighting for power, people are fighting for money and doing a lot of stuff that really don't help us move to the next step and join the others who have been oppressing us. Yeah. So it's a kind of wake up call. The guy blowing a horn is, is waking up the giant. So that mm. eye is the eye of the giant. Wow, very yeah. interesting. Your way of thinking is way out of the box, like you're there. God, I think you're in that other place you called, what do you call it? I don't need to find another place, but that's I need to find a name and... Yeah. But that's okay, I think it works. I think it works. And I think what you're doing is really good. Are you helping other artists as well, the young ones who are trying to get into the industry? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do inspire and I do train. Yeah. I do a lot of research on, on art 
how to study art, how to learn art. And um, I have a couple of private students. And um, you know, the, mom, the thing is in art, um, the more you give, the more you learn. Because you may be teaching someone, then you realize they do what you haven't been doing for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So artists are spontaneous. The more you work with many, the more you learn. Uh, so okay. I do. I do support artist growth, but I I wish the same could be extended everywhere. Because yeah. Juicy Juicy, I had a kid was expelled because they were they were dr they had drawn something, and I think that's sad. That's, that's really, really sad. sad. Yeah. That's really considering that it was a subject in school. I mean, uh, really, uh, and it could be a talent. It could be the livelihood of that person uh, just give them a chance to and in my thinking i think we couldn't have this civilization if not for art because uh, what is the alphabet what is numbers they're symbols yeah symbols cuneiforms halo griefs cave painting it's just no. that's where they came from they yeah. came from art yeah so it has developed then now someone wants to kill it when when you've already gotten part. what yeah. you're using right now, so you forget where you've come from, yeah. which is totally, totally wrong. So how can yeah. people contact you? Okay, I'm, I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook as Agri Aguata. Agri Aguata with a double G? Yes, A-double-G-R-E-Y Aguata. Then I'm on Instagram as Agri Aguata in brackets scams I mean. I'm on Twitter. So Agri Aguata. Just Everywhere. Such agri yeah. Are you comfortable giving a number? Yes, mm -hmm. I am. Okay. Zero seven one six five nine nine eight four five. Zero seven one six five nine nine eight four five. Okay. Yeah. So the young artists who are trying to get into the industry, what would be your final word and you know, motivation and inspiration for them to, you know, keep pushing into the industry? Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing art. Don't don't listen to anything that says stop it or take it slow. Just keep doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So what are the general prices for maybe um, a piece this size? Also private. Also private? Like give us a range that people can know um, what you what they're working with. I, I don't basically do art for money, but if someone oh. is generous enough to pay, then um, I'll take the pay. But then also that doesn't mean I do art for free. I don't. I because I was going to ask, free. if you're not doing I, it. I don't money. do art for free. <laughs> <laughs> because there's passion, then there's the business side of it. And passion, when you do something that you love, it doesn't, um, it doesn't pain you to do it. Yeah. And if it's appreciated, mm. then it's, it, it makes sense to appreciate what you love to do. Yeah, but also it depends on the time and the technique I've, I've, I've used. Or, or um, the technicalities of... A specific painting will not be the same with the other one. True. That's one that's, other that's thing. That's very true. And I'm currently having an exhibition. Where? When? Invite us. Nairobi Royal Golf Club. It's ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, for the purposes of exhibiting, I have prizes on the paintings. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah? But okay. for as low as anyone has, just talk to me. Let me see the passion in you. Absolutely. Then you tell me what you want. Okay. Yeah? Then we can discuss. I can say this is doable. This is not. All right. Yeah. I think, I hope my director, uh, Okedi, has gotten the answer because he's really interested in one of the pieces here. and wants to know the price. So let's see how passionate you are about that particular piece that, that you really want, Okedi. And probably you could talk to Mr. Aguata here and yeah. he will definitely uh, sort you out. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you. It's been beautiful. And yeah. uh, thank you for enlightening us on the alternate realism. Yeah. All right. This has been Paintbrush. We're taking a very short commercial break. When we come back, we've got photography and creative of the week on visual arts. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. Yeah.